I recently spent a week away from my computer on vacation, and with the desire to remain productive here on the channel despite my gaming machine being unavailable, I made the same decision I did last time I was on vacation. I picked up a mobile game. With some small exceptions, the mobile gaming space is one that I've been away from for years. I remember my distinct memory of early App Store freemium games being base building strategy experiences where most of your progress would be gated by timers, with the obvious ability to buy your way around said timers if you want. The timer aspect of freemium mobile games hasn't changed at all, but the dominant genre seems to have shifted a lot, at least from what I can tell by browsing the most popular games on the store. Character collection games are all the rage, and I guess that kinda makes sense. Pokemon cards proved decades ago just how addicting opening randomized packs and collecting them all could be, and there is tons of that here in the genre informally known as the gacha. An appropriate name considering it references the randomized Japanese capsule dispensers known as gachapons, but also because once these games get you stuck in a spending loop, they gotcha. So I figured I'd try one out and would pick whichever gacha game on the app store I could find that appealed to me the most. And when I first laid my eyes on it, I knew I had found the one. Looney Tunes World of Mayhem was released in 2018 by a mobile game studio known as Scopely. It's a turn-based RPG with a huge emphasis on collection, and what you are collecting is the tunes themselves. That's probably why a character collection experience is such a natural fit here. Collecting is only as fun as the collectibles, so working with an existing IP like the Looney Tunes is a huge majority of what makes this game so appealing. Here's how the general gameplay loop works. You start out with a single character, Bugs Bunny. After a brief tutorial, you move through the main campaign. This campaign is structured as a series of incrementally more challenging battles. Winning each battle unlocks resources that come in a variety of different forms, such as experience to level up your tunes, and items that can unlock some of the more powerful abilities. You will also gain access to character-specific tokens, and once you've gotten enough character tokens, you can turn them in to unlock the tune that they represent. Rarer and more powerful tunes require more tokens. Naturally, you can't just continue to spam the campaign as much as you want, because each battle requires you to have energy, which gets replenished on a timer. So, what are some of the other things you can do while waiting for your campaign energy? World of Mayhem's second way of earning resources is through its in-game crates. These crates contain semi-randomized and themed items depending on the type of crate that it is, and worth noting is that the game is extremely generous with giving them, giving you one every couple of hours. Here's the trick though, you can't open it immediately. They remain locked for a few hours and, during this period, they are open to be stolen by enemies. Other players can fight ghosts of your team and, if your team fails, say goodbye to your crate. You have a brief window where you can attempt to fight this opponent and steal the crate back, which puts the crates themselves in a serious tug of war, unless of course you pay real money to open it early. What helps keep this experience balanced is the fact that these battles stealing crates only occur with players that have tunes that are approximately your level, so the big spenders are up at the top of the ladder fighting the other big spenders. As a free-to-play player, the usual loop is to open up the app every few hours, redeem any login bonuses or rewards that are available, open up the crates that are ready, and do a few campaign missions to earn some resources. Then I would go check out my tunes and level up anyone that I could or buy some more packs of character tokens to unlock some new tunes, which in turn allows me to battle stronger foes and take on harder campaign missions. The battles themselves are relatively simple, but have a good amount of depth. It's a turn-based RPG. Each team has four tunes, and naturally these tunes come in all different shapes and sizes. You have your tanks, healers, damage dealers, and all the shades that each of those roles can drill down into. Bugs, for example, is a really great area damage dealer, with his signature move of the explosive present taking away health from all four opponents at the same time. When your characters can attack is determined by their speed, so each team goes back and forth attacking with each of their tunes and using whatever ability is most apt for the situation. It's fast and snappy combat, with the ability to speed up the animations there if you so choose. But don't do that. 
not looking at these animations in all of their glory would mean you miss out on what's most incredible about this game, its presentation. Everything I've described mechanics-wise about the game so far isn't all that special. All the timers and turn-based combat and resource management are things you can easily find elsewhere, but the presentation is where Looney Tunes really knocks it out of the park. Animations are the first part of that. You'll spend a lot of time looking at battles, and what keeps them so entertaining is the absolute hilarity of the attacks. Sylvester can sneak up behind his prey using cardboard cutouts. Bugs will pull a lever to have a safe come crashing down on his opponent's head. Elmer Fudd's bullets will ricochet around and will send an anvil plummeting towards unsuspecting parties. It's the same kind of slapstick comedy you'd expect from watching the Looney Tunes, and it shows just how much the developers understand the IP they were working with. And what good would the animations be if not for the tunes themselves? And that's the second part of the presentation that really impresses. It has almost 140 characters, a majority of which are the same few dozen tunes that have been reimagined in all sorts of funny themes. I've talked a bit about Bugs Bunny, he's sort of the core of my team right now and my strongest tune, but I also have a few different other Bugs tunes. I have Mr. Bugs, a suave James Bond-like Bugs whose tricky moves enable his partners. I have Barber Bugs, whose emphasis on presentation gives me stat-ups as long as I can keep my team nice and healthy. There's Cowboy Bugs, the sharpshooter whose impeccable aim trait ensures that he never misses a single attack. And I hope to one day own Bugs the Brave, the gallant defender of the weak who gives stat increases to the most vulnerable members of your team. The appeal here is pretty self-explanatory. Taking all of these iconic characters and repurposing them for all of these themes is an awesome way to make use of them, and I'm glad that Warner Brothers gave the team the flexibility to do all of this with their beloved tunes. My current favorite tune is Daffy Hood, who steals from the rich by taking stat increases from his opponents, and does so with a really flashy sense of style. In the 7 days and 0 dollars I spent on World of Mayhem, I managed to get myself to level 35, collect 41 of its 132 total tunes, unlock 4 out of the 5 main campaign acts of Marvin's Invasion, and made an alliance that almost immediately hit the 50 member limit. Special shout out to any of the members of Mad Mike's Men who are watching this. I didn't get to see everything that the game has to offer. By its nature, this game was meant to be played over the course of years, not weeks. Some entire gameplay modes, such as Alliance Warfare, were still a few levels away from me and unlocking tunes is only of secondary importance behind actually leveling them up. But regardless of the small slice of the game that I experienced, I definitely had a good time. The things that make Looney Tunes World of Mayhem awesome are the exact same things that make Looney Tunes awesome. A rich cast of iconic and diverse characters, coupled with some really excellent animations. And so to the ever-burning question of, would I recommend you play this game? It's a tough question to answer and kind of puts me in the same spot I was in when I reviewed Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. As much fun as I had, do I really want to put my seal of approval on a Skinner box designed to soak as much money out of you as possible? Just trying to redeem your login bonus every day funnels you through the store and exposes you to all of its glorious deals that you can spend your hard-earned, real cash on. Games like this are poison. But hey, the poison tastes pretty good and it is damn beautiful. If you'll excuse me, there's something I gotta do to make sure I don't waste any money.